Hey, what's up guys? Nature for Sonic Academy. Welcome back. And we are taking a look at a brand new Cubase today. Cubase 13 is of course out. And we're gonna be doing a brief overview of some of the features in this new update. I first just wanted to share some thoughts on this update though. If you were holding out for big standout new features, I don't think this is gonna be the update for you. It's not gonna be one that's gonna draw in tons of new users into the Cubase uh, ecosystem either. Now, the other thing to bear in mind here is Cubase used to be updated by 0.5 in the version numbers every year. Steinberg did away with that a little while ago. However, this does feel like a 0.5 update with 12 being the a big version where they moved to the new licensing system last year with a bunch of new features and 13 being what I feel is a 12.5 update, but obviously with a new version numbering scheme that they do every single year. Now, Cubase is one of the oldest DAWs out there and this is a a polishing of some areas that really really required it a lot of it being under the hood uh, and that are not going to be sort of standout features like I said I will say though however uh, from the time that I've spent with this this is probably the most stable that I've seen Cubase for a very long time it's also the nicest looking it's been in ages and there are a ton of ideas and elements that were updated in version 12 that were not necessarily completed and version 13 really rounds it out nicely uh, it feels like a more modern DAW now. Anyways, without further ado, let's uh, jump in and take a look at some of the new features inside of Cubase 13. Like I said, this is gonna be an overview video. We're not deep diving into anything here, but let's take a look at what is on offer. Right, so I wanna discuss some of the GUI elements, some of the visual updates happening here. Uh, as well as just some of the under the hood things going on in Cubase 13. One thing you can notice first uh, when you start this up and you have this uh, the Cubase Pro Hub pop up, um, there's no more floating toolbar in the top, at least for the Windows version. They've uh, overhauled the Windows handling inside of Windows, which is a huge improvement in my opinion. Um, this was always a bit of a pain, this sort of floating toolbar. Any window that's open now has one attached to it like this. Uh, if nothing's open, the Hub comes up as it is right here. Uh, so we can go in and we can just um, open a project from here and take a look at the new interface. So it has been given a visual overhaul pretty much throughout uh, the, uh, the app. There's tons of places that have been sort of redone. Uh, this was include um, a number of outstanding areas like the VST connections page now is correct. This also goes for the key commands window that is now in line with the design. If you remember before, this was the old sort of white screen that used to pop up here. Uh, everything is now all in line with the new design language of Cubase 13. Um, you'll notice on the screen here, we now have a new channel pane uh, on the left-hand side here. It's can also be removed if you want here. Uh, so you have two panes essentially. And this uh, really just separates the sort of essential channel functionality that you have uh, within the mixer from the inspector section. Now, of course you can have all of this in the inspector, but there is so much information here that this is really welcome that you can actually separate the two of them. Uh, if you go to right click in this piece here and set up sections, of course you have access to pretty much everything, uh, which we can open up. But this is kind of overkill, so it's nice to have them separate. Now this being Cubase, of course, you can customize everything. So this side, you can also customize your channel strips. Uh, I've got the pre's inserts, strip sends, uh, and the latency readout here. Uh, with a lot of the stuff having a new look, a lot of the buttons and things um, having a new look there. Things like the MIDI inserts have also been updated. Let's take a look at Beat Designer, for example. Also all in line with the new design language. So no more ugly old MIDI plugins. Right, so obviously another area that has seen a substantial visual overhaul is the mixer page. So let's bring that up quickly. So this, this is similar and a continuation from the sort of overall style that we saw in Cubase 12. Everything is just slicker, I have to say. Uh, it's subtle in places, but it just does look a little bit more premium, a little bit more stylish, uh, which I like. Of course, we can go ahead and uh, sort of modify what content gets displayed within our channel strips here. We can just open this up and uh, bring in my hardware routing, perhaps the E, uh, let's bring in the strip. Um, direct routing, you've got quick control channels there as well. Sends, inserts, 
So you've got a ton of information that you have on the mixer. Let's just take a look at some of the various sections within this. Uh, we'll take a look at the strip. Uh, so obviously you've got your EQ, uh, your compression dynamic section, uh, tools, saturation, limiting, etc. You've also got these nice little pop-out windows that happens uh, whenever you edit one of these. This is obviously the EQ. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the others, like a saturation, for example. Again, easily controllable from this little pop-up here. The compression section, for example, and uh, obviously that spills out into the channel strip section over here as well. And as before, you can actually edit these full screen within the channel settings page as well, uh, which is really nice. I think that looks great. Uh, this was obviously from Cubase 12 already that you had this ability. And you can see again, small changes to fonts and uh, graphics, just the, the whole package just seems a lot neater and a lot nicer in this release. They've apparently modernized a lot of the under the hood stuff uh, pertaining to the sort of display of visual elements in Cubase. I will also say that so far my testing of this is, it is way more stable. It, it just feels like a more complete product. As I said, Cubase 12 for me was the first step in modernizing Cubase. Cubase 13 feels like the second step uh, and, and the sort of final push to bring Cubase up to speed. And hopefully next year we'll see them adding a bunch more features to their production suite. Cool, so speaking of features, let's take a look at some of the new plugins inside of Cubase 13. Right, so there seems to be a bit of an emphasis placed on vocal stuff as far as the new plugins go. Um, I think the major plugin here is Vocal Chain and some of the other new plugins have had their sort of tech uh, built for this and then expanded into standalone plugins as well. Vocal Chain is a pretty detailed set of tools that you're going to be working with for vocals. Um, I quite like the way that they've laid this out with the clean section, your sort of surgical processes that you're going to run on your vocals. Initially, uh, the character section for shaping the, the tone and the color a little bit further. And then you've got a send section here, which has reverb and delay built in. I don't want to spend too much time diving deep into these, but let's just take a look at, uh, we'll bring up a preset and just see what this does for us. Ah, echoes of love is all I've ever Of you are just echoing around feelings that slip away, burning through my eyes. Back to the start. So you can see a lot of stuff going on there with the processing, uh, everything from we've got some basic filtering there at first. The pitch section, obviously, uh, working as a tuner for the vocals there. Uh, initial compression, de-esser, uh, the dynamic filter, going into the exciter, de-esser again in the character section, additional compressor, um, this one having the black valve, you'll see this algorithm here, as well as the extreme one and vox comp. Um, dynamic filter 2, EQ2, and then we've got an imager delay and reverb set up on that one. Uh, now speaking of that black valve compressor, let's take a look at some of those because those have actually been expanded into sort of standalone compressors within Cubase. Right, so the first one we'll take a look at here is the black valve compressor, and then we've got the Vox Comp. They're just echoing around, feelings that slip away. One of the algorithms that you could use within the vocal chain as well, but obviously you can use this on any material you want. Uh, there's additionally also two new EQ plugins. They're obviously based on a Poltec, the EQ M5, which is the mid-range one. Then you've also got the EQ P1A, which should look very familiar to most of you. Boost and attenuate on both the lows and the highs, that typical sort of Poltec style EQ now included in Cubase as part of the stock plugins. I'm just going to bring up the new vocoder. Uh, this has been updated with a new interface as well. Of course, we could add a MIDI track here and just connect this to our vocoder quickly. And lastly, on the plugin front, there have been some uh, additions made to Supervision, which is always great to have, as well as an updated test tone generator with some pretty useful features. I love the sweep um, feature that they've got in here. Set these to intervals as well. 
and obviously all been updated to the new UI as well. But obviously if you're a Cubase user, you'll know that there's always a ton of small changes that get made to workflow and this is no different. There's an enormous amount of just small updated features here and there. Uh, I'll run through some of them and talk briefly about others. Let's take a look at the sample quick. First, there's a new uh, audio warp mode in here, the Spectral HD. I believe this is probably taken from Halion 7, the Spectral mode. So you've got the three Spectral modes here, Vocal, HD, and the standard one. Uh, I've got a kick loaded in here. It's obviously not intended for this, but let's just take a listen. So obviously some pretty interesting stuff that you can do with these. You've also got control over the four mints as well. Uh, there's also been some uh, pretty nifty little updates to the envelopes inside of the sampler as well. If we click on one of the mod sections here, uh, you'll see the envelope here. We've got this new paint tool. You can actually select different waveforms to paint with here. And just take something like that and then you can draw in multiple nodes of those. And obviously according to your sync settings as well, we can make this to... 64th note for example and uh, some pretty interesting stuff that you can do with this editor and also make selections and skew and adjust automation and modulation like such. So pretty nice little addition that as well. Now in the MIDI editors, there's been a number of uh, little tweaks here and there, some to the step editing. We have a, a range tool now also available inside of the editors, uh, which is really nice to have. I'm not gonna spend much time on this one, but there's a bunch of additions as well as to how Cubase approaches uh, multi-part editing. Anybody working with a lot of uh, orchestral programming or notation is gonna really appreciate a lot of the features with Within that. The chord pads have seen some uh, updates as well, both visually and functionally. Uh, there's a few new features in here. Again, not going to get too much into this. Right off the bat, you can see uh, quite a few visual changes when selecting chords. Also added a little root key selection over here, which is nice. I'm not overly excited about the chord section, though it's not a feature that I use loads in Cubase. But as far as the chord uh, pad functionality goes, if this is something that you do use, I do think that Cubase has one of the more extensive feature sets uh, pertaining to this sort of thing uh, out of most of the DAWs out there right now. There's some very, very cool stuff that you can do with this feature set. Another place you can see small changes, uh, there's been a number of key commands that have been changed within Cubase, uh, new that have been added. Uh, there's also a, a bunch of additional settings within the preferences pane. Why they haven't changed this to the new visual look, I'm not sure. It seems to be the only part of Cubase that is still outstanding uh, as far as the sort of overall look and feel is concerned. Um, but yes, there's, there's, a, there's a number of new features here. Uh, new things to change and set up within the preferences section as well. Now the MIDI 2.0 specs are finally out as well and uh, Cubase has MIDI 2.0 fully implemented. That includes high resolution uh, control data. It's not something that's going to be incredibly obvious to you right now but uh, it is future proofed in that regard. A number of other little improvements like the automatic smoothing of control data within Cubase which has been added in version 13 as well. There's also been some changes to the add track dialog here as well. And then one other little feature that I really like uh, there is this uh, channel configuration switch here that you can switch between mono and stereo on the fly now very simply from the actual channel itself. And yeah, there are numerous other little uh, tweaks like this uh, in and around this release. So right, yeah, as I said, uh, I think the major thing with this release, Cubase 13, is just polish. And I think they've done a fantastic job of that. Some real core systems that needed to be upgraded, and that's all been done very well, I think. It's stable. It looks great. I don't think this is going to be an update that's going to win over a ton of new users. But if you are an existing Cubase user, I do think that you're really going to enjoy this update and should definitely check this out. I think this compared with a lot of the features that were brought in with version 12 uh, make for a really nice step forward for this DAW. Um, also do bear in mind that Steinberg did do away with the 0.5 uh, naming system that they had in the past. 
Uh, I do feel that this feels like a 12.5 update, um, but obviously they are moving up incrementally in whole numbers now, so this would be 13. And with 12 being the big one, with the move to the new licensing system and so on. So yeah, that's just my brief little overview of Cubase 13. Um, go check this out, I do think it's a good update. And let us know what you guys think in the comments. Are you happy with this update or were you expecting more from Steinberg? Do you think that they are headed in the right direction? Right, so if you are also a new Cubase user and wanting to learn more, we are going to have updated tutorials at Sonic Academy. These are beginners tutorials, level one and two, where we will walk you through creating a very basic track. Uh, we'll step it up a notch in uh, the level two and then uh, some advanced tutorials coming soon as well. So like I said, if you are wanting to learn more about Cubase, head down to sonicacademy.com for more info. Right guys, I will catch you soon right here at Sonic Academy. Till then, take care, see you then.